Okay, this is quite the collection. My goodness. Hello, lovely people. So today, I want to talk about, for the lovely month of Utoba, a stack of books that I'm currently reading of the witchy variety. Let's go through them. These are not book reviews. No, no, no. This is what I'm currently, is on my TBR. I figured we go through them, some of the things. It's a little bit random. I will say that. It is not at all kind of under a certain realm. There is a theme going on as I am currently heavy into the demonology for my own book that is very fictionalized, very different new twist, paranormal romance with demons. So I want to know as much about demonology and refurbish some of my information that I perused from earlier days. When I went to the Portland Book Fair, Portland Book, it was held at the museum. I can't remember the title of it, but. So this one is called Occult Features of Anarchism. The, within Attention to the Conspiracy of Kings and Conspiracy of the Peoples by Erica, ooh, last name, Liga, Liganis? Anyway, this wonderful book, I am super, super interested to read. It is a short one, but, yeah, no, anything to do in this realm of things, especially when the occult or anything just crosses over with other parts of culture and how it influences culture in general, political stuff too, all the fucking about it. So I'm eager to read this one. Uh, next one that I found when I went into Powell's the other day with cruising with a friend is, this is so much more fun, Coffee Magic for the Modern Witch. Uh, by Elise Wilde, a practical guide for coffee rituals, divination readings, magical brews, latte sigil writings, and more. I've been wanting to do, cause like I can do the standard pentagram on my coffees. That's not a problem, but I want to do other sigil stuff too as well. And I have done a video previously, I think in this channel about uh, coffee magic, specifically when it comes to my grandfather. He is a uh, Middle Eastern, uh, is Armenian, grew up in uh, Baghdad, Iraq though, and so he's done silly little coffee ground readings and stuff for us in the past. And I would love to get more into the actual magics of coffee and like really kind of break down stuff with coffee because I, I am that millennial person. I adore my bean juice, my magical wonderfulness. And so let's go more into the situations about it. Again, another short read, a quick read, a fun little deep dive in all about it. Next on the list, we have Delphi, Into the Myths We Go, uh, by Claire Pollard. I, think she, I have so many random Greek retellings about mythos in general that I have just been piling up on my shelves and I told myself I need to read at least one or two. Oracle sounds great. Let's go with that. This one's a little more sciencey, a little more fun, but I absolutely adore anything that's a little dark and dreary and talking about decomposition <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this, you know, it, it, so it's, it's kind of like witchcraft adjacent. Uh, I do believe that science and witchcraft, they run like this, but it can at times do the weaving and the woven. A lot of things have been inspired and so forth. So I like to dabble where I can very much layman on the scientific front. So we found the Gory Details, Adventures uh, from the Dark Side of Science by Erica Engel Hopt. Hopt? Yes. Be afraid, be very afraid, with wicked wit and a dash of morbid curiosity, this provocative narrative from the author of National Geographic's popular Gory Details blog takes us on a fascinating journey through the astonishing new realities where our weirdest and wildest fascinations will be eliminated. No subject is off limits for the acclaimed science reporter who boldly investigates the gross, the taboo, and the morbid, as well the absurd realities of our bodies and our universe. I mean, come on. How is that not? Who, who, who would not? I want, I want to read so bad, so. That is also on my list. Fun, 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 fun. All right, we are kind of getting into the demon bookies now. So, uh, because I can't leave well enough alone if something's highly interest, intrigued with me, uh, demons are, again, like I said earlier, are a part of my novel. I am playing with them and kind of reimagining some lore for my fantastical world that I am building. Uh, and so I wanted to get a dictionary of demons. Like, let's break down the big boys. This is Expanded and Revised by M. Ballinger, uh, Names of the Damned. So this has a huge dictionary of several of the different, uh, I literally just opened <laughs> I literally just opened the book and uh, because I know many of goddess and God 
<laughs> has been tur turned into demon by the church and whatever at large. And so I'm just going to turn this to you so you can see exactly who we're talking about here. Um, do you see how it says Proserpine or per Persephone? Per per yeah. <laughs> Hello, goddess. What's up? Proserpina, the Roman goddess. She was the daughter of uh, uh, Ceres, the goddess of harvest, and the sort and the consort of Pluto, the god of the underworld. Yeah, the Persephone. <laughs> um, it's very interesting. They've got the black goat. Nothing to do with her next to her, which is interesting. I'm assuming that has to do with another entry that's down here. But hi, mom. <laughs> that's funny. Love. I'll have to give her a little offering later. That's a little. That's a little call out to me, isn't it, huh? So that is super fun. Um, yeah, so this has so many different gods um, that have been turned into demons, other demons of multiple, like basically anything that's been demonified, <laughs> demonic, uh, it has their names. Also talks about like sealed in blood, how blood seals and stuff came to be in history. I get a very brief, brief introduction to this type of thing. So I am extremely interested. This is the thick boy though, so this might take me some time. Definitely probably won't read it entirely by the end of this year, but I am intrigued. I cannot wait. Same thing with the demon stuff is kind of going to the books that I know of in kind of popular culture or like where we get so many of our ideas of demons from. So first thing first, if you did not know, uh, King James version of the Bible, you know, the one that's like freaking everywhere in America, before that Bible, uh, he commissioned this. <laughs> Uh, Demonology by King James the first so he was an intriguing one so I am interested to go through this and see roughly what the strange little man who became king was talking about before he made his weird little version of the Bible that caused such a kerfuffle um, so that's on my list simply because I need to know the histories and some basics we'll see what we retain uh, on a similar level I have the lesser key of Solomon by Aleister Crowley. This is kind of a dual thing. I do, coming later uh, in October, will be a ma uh, history magic video, witchy history on Aleister Crowley. Um, so I know of his histories. I have known of his practices and stuff, especially when it comes to the father of chaos magic and his problematic nonsense. But I also, when I'm researching something, let's read all of his works. Apparently this will be similar to gobbledygook nonsense which will be very interesting. So many seals. Oh, look at all those. Aha, uh -huh. fun. Anyway, so I do like to dabble in all of that as well, just so I have a firmer understanding of some things and might be more inspirations for my book. You know what I mean? And then finally, again, back with the mythos. I've already started reading this. I think this is so much fun. It's kind of been like my creepy bedtime story throughout the night. Never Whistle at Night. Uh, this is a collection of indigenous dark fiction anthologies. So a lot of these are inspired by uh, indigenous myths already. Several things that have given me the creeps at night. Uh, so I've been reading about a story a night. I think I've gotten like a third of the way through. So I'll definitely finish this before October is up. But ooh, can't recommend it enough. If you were at all screamish, um, specifically about things in the dark not looking or looking too closely like something that they shouldn't be. Um, the first short story in this, that, that one, got, it got me. Honestly, I don't even wanna say these names or what some of these things are. <laughs> Cause it say the thing and it knows you're there. So we don't do that. No, 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 no. So, uh, but the one by Math Mathilda Zeller, Matilda, Mathilda. I'm not entirely sure if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, but those other, are, oh, the very first one in this is utterly terrifying. I will give you that review, so. But tons of fun, love that. And anyway, this is my gigantic pile of witchy-ish adjacent reads that I will be doing for the fall. What are your witchy reads that you are doing? Or occult, paganist, what nonsense, all of that. Recommendations always in the, down in the comments below. I want to have an amazing library for myself. And always I'm looking for more books and things to read. So anyway, that was today's video. I hope you guys are having an amazing October with all of magical vibes and of course a little bit of the spooky. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.